Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 and 4 to the power 100. And we're going to figure out which number is larger. I'll be presenting two approaches. Let's start with the first one. First of all, I'm going to compare two numbers that are powers of 3 and powers of 4. So we'll start with 243 and 256. Obviously, 243 is less than 256. This can also be written as 3 to the 5th power is less than 4 to the 4th power, which is the same as 2 to the 8th power. Now, my goal is to get to 4 to the power 100. And for that, I do need 4 to the power 96. So let's go ahead and compare 3 to the power 96 with 4 to the power 96. Since 3 is less than 4, we can raise both sides to the power 96, and this inequality will be true. Now we have two inequalities, and we can multiply them together. And that's going to give us 3 to the power 101 is less than 4 to the power 100. Great. Is there another way to get to this result directly? Probably. But anyway, so we have this relationship. And in our expression, we don't have 3 to the power 101, but we have something close to it. Now think about it. 2 to the power 100 is less than 3 to the power 100. So we can kind of use it to our advantage. Okay. And if you're wondering what 3 to the power 101 looks like, it's going to, to be approximately 1.55 times 10 to the power 48. So that's a pretty large number. And the other number, you will see in a little bit what that looks like. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and compare 2 to the power 100 with 3 to the power 100. Now my goal is to get to this sum, but first of all I want to compare these two numbers together. And then to get my sum from the left hand side, I'm going to be adding 3 to the power 100 to both sides. And obviously when I do add that to the right hand side, I get the same thing twice. So we can write this as 2 to the power 100, oopsies, I forgot to put the less than sign. Instead, I put a plus sign. So now we can safely say that 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 is less than 2 times 3 to the power 100. Great. So we have this relationship. And obviously, I do want to compare this to 4 to the power 100. And I can do that by using this. But first of all, I have to compare this to something else. So here's how we're going to proceed. Since we know that 2 is less than 3, right? I mean, I think everybody would agree to that, hopefully. This, it means 2 times 3 to the power 100 is less than 3 times 3 to the power 100. Great. So you start with 2 is less than 3 and multiply both sides by 3 to the power 100. And this will be a true inequality. But when you multiply 3 times 3 to the power 100, you're going to get 3 to the power 101. Awesome. This kind of gives us uh, a way to compare 2 times 3 to the power 100 with 3 to the power 101. So as a result, we get the following. This number here, 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 is less than 2 times 3 to the power 100, which is less than 3 to the power 101. So we kind of got like a chain of inequalities. But remember, 3 to the power 101 was already compared to a power of 4. So we can kind of include that in our chain and write this as 3 to the power 101 is less than 4 to the power 100. And this is a really good result because it allows us to compare the two numbers that we were looking for. And that's it, right? So as a result, we can say that 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 is going to be less than 4 to the power 100. And since we were looking for the greater or larger number, this is going to be the larger number in this case. And let's see how we can compare these using a different approach. And that is going to be my second approach. So for my second approach, I'll be working with fractions. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay. So 
I will start with 1 half to the power 100. And since 1 half is between 0 and 1, it's kind of like a fraction, or we can write it as a decimal as 0 0.5. When you raise it to a higher power, the number gets smaller, right? So we can safely say that 1 half to the power 100 is going to be less than 1 half. Great. Now, let's consider another number like this one. And it's going to be 3 fourths to the power 100. You're going to see later on why I'm using this number and that number, because I'll put it together in a nice way. So consider powers of 3 fourths. And in this case, I'm not comparing uh, 3, to the power, uh, 3 fourths to the power 100 to 3 fourths, not it to, the, to, the, to the base, but more like uh, I, I want to compare it to 1 half. OK, let's see how that compares. So. If you raise, obviously, 3 fourths to the first power, you get the same number. Then this is greater than 1 half. If you raise 3 fourths to the second power, that's going to be 9 over 16. And as you know, 9 over 16 is greater than 8 over 16, which is the same thing as 1 half. So second power of 3 fourths is also greater than 1 half. What happens when you raise it to the third power? Then you're going to get 27 out of 64. But notice that this is less than... 32 over 64, which is the same thing as 1 half. So we got a power of 3 fourths, the smallest integer power of 3 fourths that is less than 1 half. And this is good. We can kind of write this uh, as a bunch of you know inequalities. Since 3 fourths uh, is between 0 and 1, uh, the same thing is true. So it is greater than its second power. But now we got to remember that this is greater than 1 half. And when we raise 3 fourths to the third power, it is going to be less than 1 half. So in other words, 1 half is squeezed between two powers of 3 fourths. Awesome. And obviously, this is going to continue with the fourth power and so on and so forth until you reach. And you don't have to stop there. But for our purposes, we're going to stop at the 100th power. So in other words, we have that 3 fourths to the power of 100. And this is what matters is less than 1 half. Obviously, you could easily guess that because 3 fourths to a really large power is going to give you a very small number. You can evaluate that that's going to be a really small number. And obviously, that's going to be less than 1 half. Come on. All right, now we have one inequality. And we already had another inequality right here. Let's go ahead and put those together. So now I have 1 half to the power 100 is also less than 1 half. And why did I do this? because I want to add these two inequalities. Great. Now, when we add these two inequalities, we're going to get something nice. And you'll see in a little bit how this works. OK. Let's go ahead and put these together. And now, the result is going to be less than 1. Now, my goal is to make a common denominator and add these two fractions. but I don't have a common denominator. So let's go ahead and change the 1 half to 2 fourths. Easy, right? Arithmetic. And then, now we can add them because they have a common denominator. So that's going to be 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100 divided by 4 to the power 100. And that's going to be less than 1. Since 4 to the power 100 is a positive number, we can multiply both sides by that. And that's going to give us the same result we got with the first approach. That shouldn't be a surprise, right? Obviously, 4 to the power 100 is going to be larger. But what about the values of these numbers? Let's go ahead and take a look at the numerical values. Great. So now the first one is going to be 2 to the power 100 plus 3 to the power 100. So this number is a really large number. It's gigantic. In scientific notation, you see what it looks like. It has 48 digits, and it's called Quator Decillion. So that's a really interesting name for it, but that's what the name is. And there are some comparisons, like this is 0 0.0099 times the number of chess positions, so on and so forth. Wow, that's a lot of positions, by the way. OK, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at 4 to the power 100 now. And this number is called a Novem Decillion which is a really cool name, I think. And it has 61 
decimal digits. And obviously, it's much, much larger than the sum that we have. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.